I'm saying this here for the first time, mm. and he would back me. Chamati gave me a call and asked me to be his vice president. Oh, Alan Chamati oh. called you to be his vice president. When I was a young boy in 1996, guess who my Trendy idol was? Nana Kufuado. When he lost oh. the primaries to Kufuor, I President cried. President Kufuado was an you. idol. Yes. When he lost the primaries to Kufuor, I cried. People in my area teased me to death. I'm telling you. Have you met him before? When I was a Constitution Review Commission, he had been invited to interview as the former Attorney General. In that circumstance, would you love and I was to have a sit down with him? Today, people say that I'm his number one enemy. I never was. I loved this man. I became a lawyer because of him. I think that he has to redeem himself to the nation in some regard for me to feel so. He, I, I feel he has to redeem himself to the nation. Believe this or not, I have never voted for either the NDC or the MPP. You have never? Never in my life. I've consistently voted for the CP. And, uh, and I, a little bad whispered to me that you went there on scholarship. Is that yes, true? Yes, I was. I was on Under the President Kufo. Under President Kufo. Yes, I said, as flattered as I am, I'm only 37. <laughs> but I do wish you well. I think what is missing in our democracy is the citizens getting involved. That's why my project is committed to mobilizing citizens. Mm. Mobilize has faced the country, not when we mobilize Occupy Jilobi House, have we received a penny. Oh. We even put so the information of those, okay. of those that donate to us. There's a platform now that Pen Plus Bytes created called Yen Somubi. We put this campaign for this protest there for people to donate to it. And they do. To be his vice president. Oh, Alan Chemati called you to be his vice president. Yes. And I said, as, as flattered, I wrote him a letter, a nice letter. And I said, as flattered as I am, I'm only 37. <laughs> but I do wish you well. I think that the way my path forward, I don't think it's in politics. I think it is continuing to mobilize our citizens. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested. I'm not looking for partisan office. I think that if party can solve our problems, we would have already done that. I think what is missing in our democracy is the citizens getting involved. That's why my project is committed to mobilizing citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, in doing so, I understand that it gives way to a lot of misunderstanding. People who have only been shown one way of... Mob we, there's no example for what we have done. What we are doing now, people compare it to what? CJA. Because they think it is, you know, it's a, it's a partisan project. So they, at AFAC, yeah, so we know that the politics so always is genuine. Here this and now that the democracy not, hub is not aligned. Not, 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 any... not when we mobilize as face the country, not when we mobilize Occupy Jilobi House, have we received a penny? How, a do, you, penny. how do you finance your activism? And you know what's funny is, in yeah. all of this? We always do it publicly. We crowdsource. Oh. We even put so the information of those, okay. of those that donate to us. There's a platform now that Pen Plus Bytes created called Yen Somubi. We put this campaign for this protest there for people to donate to it. And they do. Consistently, yes, and do. You can see how much we have received in donations. Because we want to be able to be as transparent in this process as we can. But I think that there's a template that past things like this have given people that they only believe that it can only lead into a partisan project and it must reinforce the status quo. I do want that through this, many young people will be interested in getting into politics. But I don't want to do something that reinforces the dominant two parties. It doesn't serve our democracy. I sincerely believe. Your biggest influence is growing up. Where? My dad, actually. Your dad? My, even though there was, a, there was a point throughout this activism that I had to block him. Oh, you blocked your dad on what? I, 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 had, to, I had to block him. <laughs> I, no, I'm telling you why. I'm what? telling you why. Because when we started this, and I can understand the parental concern, but every day, my dad would wake up and send forward me messages of everybody who are... You know, like old, old people do. And he would forward me so many messages reminding me that I'm going to die. And, and so much so that it was affecting my mental health. Five. And I said, I can't take this anymore. So you blocked your dad? So, so I had to block him. Now, you don't I mean, now he's, li oh, he's living in my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I had, no, but some point, at some point, I, you had to block I could, him out. I, could, I wake up from bed, anxiety. Because I pick up my phone, it's like tons and tons and tons of that. From your dad? From my dad. But I... I, I, I grew up idolizing him. I mean, I was, when I was younger, I was always called the Assemblyman's Boy because he was the first Assemblyman of our community. People loved him. Road was done in the community. And I saw so many people come to him with our problems. I would sit in and watch him. He introduced me at a very young age to political discussions. He would ensure that I would come and sit and watch the TV. Incidentally, when I was a young boy in 1996, guess who my idol was? Who? Nana Kufuado. When he lost oh. the primaries to Kufuor, I President cried. President Kufuor was your idol. You, yes. When he lost the primaries to Kufuor, I cried. Young people, people in my area teased me to death. I'm telling you. Have you met him before? 
When I was a Constitution Review Commission, he had been invited to interview as the former Attorney General. In that circumstance, would you love and I was to have a sit down with him? This uh, your uh, idol. This somebody you idol. He used to be. He used He's to be. not. In fact, I've written. I wrote an article where I was talking about, and that's one of the, that one of the dangers of why I don't even want to step into politics, is that those people who give their lives fighting for an ideal to see what they have become. It's like when Peter said, I would never betray him. When the cock crowed three times, he had done something that he shouldn't have done. That I look upon them and I can't believe this is what they've become. And, and he has become in particular. Today, people say that I'm his number one enemy. I never was. I loved this man. I became a lawyer because of him. Do you understand? Like, would you, the would idea, up, would you want to meet him? I think, I think that he has to redeem himself to the nation in some regard for me to feel so. He, I, I feel he has to redeem himself to the nation. For all that has happened, he says, and I, I, he, I, there's still a remote chance. He says that he's put his presidency on the line. He's two months. He can still resign and show you that still he want has, the president to resign. Yes, he's, I want he's to. Galam say he's put together a commission. They're oh, fighting. The Lord. soldiers are going back and all of that. Shouldn't you give him that credit, <laughs> Oliver? <laughs> he still has a chance to show Ghanaians that when a person gives their word, their word is their bond. And that his resignation will give Ghanaians a chance to dream. When in 2016, when when President Mills and uh, Mahama lost, I was saying that he had to lose because Ghanaians should not accept this level of mediocrity and reward it with a second term. So you were happy that President Mahama lost? Oh election. yes, I mean I, w I was out of the country at the time. I was working. I, I think I was either at the UN. I was working in DC um, in policy at Covington. And yes, you know, I, I donated towards Occupy uh, Flagstaff oh, House. And oh, you like donated? That. Yes. You supported it? Yes, absolutely. You know? And in fact, I did that because as somebody who had worked for Raymond at the presidency, I saw, I could see the... It's one of the reasons why I left the country. And when I left the country, I swore that I was never going to come back you to did. this country. I did. When you Any went person, at the presidency, you, said, you saw some rot there? I saw, you know, for the... You see, when you are in the country, right? You become to be, you get convinced that so maybe the people at the highest up, you know, they are thinking about the country and the things get lost in translation. I didn't see it. I, I, I it, it's, it's like, you know, going to open the door and there's nothing behind it. That's kind of how it felt to me. And I was so, I was so demoralized by what I saw at the presidency that when I left the country, you I was not coming not back. Come back. I was not coming back again. And this was under President Mahama. This was under President Mahama when I left. So I resigned and left. Uh, did Harvard, went to the Netherlands, worked for the International Court of Justice. What did you study at Harvard? Uh, I did pol political theory, okay. legal and political theory mm. at, at Harvard Law School. And then I went to the Netherlands, worked for the International Court of Justice. I clerked for the, the vice president of the court, went back to D.C., worked at the U.N. You're a big one. And all this point, I'm like, anybody who called me, this is, what I, mm. this is the speech I gave them. I said, take the, take the globe. You see those lines that says they are countries, they are imaginary. There's, there's nothing like that. The world is your oyster. Go mm -hmm. anywhere else. That's the speech I repeated consistently. Till I was, I was in Cambridge when that tweet faced the country by Kali J mm -hmm. went around. And it touched me in a particular way. It was in around the same time that Sam Jonah had given down the, yeah. down the up elevator and talked about the culture of silence. And I felt that, I felt it in me that I, I needed to do more. So that got you back. That is what got me back into this country. I had vowed I was not coming back to this country again. You know? So that is the drive that I've been on since, since that time. Mm. So when I... That's why, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything away from me when people misunderstand and think that this can only be partisan-driven and you are being promised what and not. not. Even I've gone on air and I swore by the ancestors that may the ancestors curse me if I accept an appointment. You from not. this thing. The only thing I've said consistently that I think that this country deserves a new constitution. That is fair. We have, to come, we have talked about a new constitution for a new generation. That any government that comes, comes in, yes. that is committed to constitutional reform, I will support it. I was a member of the Constitution Review Commission and, and I believe in that project. Mm. So I'm, mm. I am ready to serve in that capacity. No matter the government. MVP, no matter MVP, who it is. Because I believe that our, peop our people deserve a second chance. Outside of work, what hobbies or activities do you enjoy that, uh, that, will, that keeps you grounded. <laughs> do you even have a social life? No, I do have a social life. I mean, I do love to read. Unfortunately, it's still mm. a very solitary <laughs> yes, of course, endeavor. I, mean, yeah. I love road trips, driving. Oh. You know, I've done, I've done with my partner from... Uh, we drove from, from 
Well, we left the Hague to Paris. We drove from Paris to Barcelona. Went through Geneva. It was the longest oh, drive. Yes. And so I loved it. In, in the US, the US is even the best. I drive across states. So that's one of my biggest things that I, I love to do. But I do love to hang out with friends and, oh, and, you do? and chat about everything and nothing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, 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 what do you hang out if you do? Uh, you, you're creating a situation where I'll not be able to go back there again. 